All right, guys, so for trig, this is 5.1, and for pre-cal, this is 4.1. Um, this is angles in degrees and radians. If you're following along with my PowerPoint, I'm moving on to slide two. So slide two right now is just giving you an image. Um, you might have seen this in geometry. So this right side right here is where we will always start drawing our angles, okay? This is called my initial side. This is where I'm starting. And then if I want to draw a degree, let's say 100 degrees, past, a little past 90, then I would go counterclockwise to what's called my terminal side. And that's how I draw a 100 degree angle. Easy enough? Degrees that are expressed negative, let's say if I wanted to draw 100 degrees, but negative 100 degrees, I still start right here. This is always my starting point and my initial side. But now instead of going counterclockwise, I go downward. So for negatives, right? So this would be negative 90 down here, where this was positive 90. And now I go a little past it. This would be my terminal side where I end. And that's how you would draw a negative 100 degree angle. This is just drawing them positive and negative. So counterclockwise for positive angle, clockwise or downward for a negative angle. You can also see them start to use um, new little symbols in this slide, okay? Um, in Algebra, when we didn't know the value of something, what would we use? What kind of variable? What variable would we use now, Susan? X, what else? Y, and what else? Gee, come on, you guys are making me miss that on my, my YouTube channel. All right, so when we start talking about angles, okay, angles, Yes, this is being recorded. When we start talking about angles, we start to use um, Greek alphabet, okay? Uh, remember, this was all, U.S. did not exist. The English alphabet did not exist back when math was being discovered and, and putting labels to it. So the Greek alphabet was used, and that's where you see theta, alpha, and beta, okay? So word-wise, that is theta, alpha, and beta. Where else do you guys see these symbols? So think of what quantity you are traveling backwards, okay? So if, do you agree that, like, this is a right angle, right? A right angle. So a right angle downward would be negative 90 going up to here. 270 is if I were to go the positive direction. 270 is I went three total right angles. Here I went one right angle downward, which would be negative 90 plus a little more. Does that make sense? 270 is if I went the positive way. So I was asking you guys if you recognize those symbols for anywhere, anywhere else. Have you guys gone on like a college trip and you've seen like all the sororities, right, in the France? That's because they use the Greek alphabet. Can you say the Greek like, you know, if those, that's where those symbols come from, okay? All right, I'm moving on to the next slide. It's slide four, where they talk about what a radian is. A radian is specifically, like if you had a circle with a specific radius, let's say the radius was five meters, then one radian would be five meters along the circle. Does that make sense? One more time, if I had a circle, the radius was five meters, then one radian would be five meters, but along the circle, like the arc length of it, okay? So we'll say,
arrow here, it's a measure along the arc of the circle equivalent to the measure of the radius. So, we draw ourselves a little circle. So, if this has a measurement of r, then from here to here would be r, and then another set of that could be r up to here, and so on. So we pose the question. Yes, thank you. I was taking those heads up, guys. So if I draw you this circle and tell you that the radius is five inches. And then this distance along the arc up to here is 20 inches. How many radians are within that space? Show me with your fingers. One more time. If the radius is 5 inches and this distance along the arc, also known as arc length, is 20 inches, then how many radians are within this arc length? Beautiful. You're all giving me the right answer. Four. Okay, you divide. So, believe it or not, without me even giving you the formula, you just created the formula for radian. Okay? That, so, radians is expressed as the symbol theta. Okay? Theta is radian. And it is arc length. divided by radius. One of your first main formulas in your textbook and in your formula sheet, um, they use the symbol, the letter S for arc length. I don't know why S over R. So you'll see theta equals S over R. First big formula you'll see. How are we doing up to here? Easy? Told you, mathematically this is easier. You're just kind of learning this new language of speaking when it comes to trig. Later on in this section, you're going to see this exact formula um, just moves around a little bit. So instead of them asking you to solve for theta, for the radian, they might ask you to solve for the arc length. So if I wanted arc length be S by itself, what would I do? Beautiful. Multiply the R to the other side, and now I have a formula for arc length. Does that make sense? You'll see that happen in a little while. I just want you to realize that you can memorize one formula, you don't have to memorize two separate ones. It's the same thing. All right. I am moving on to slide six. Slide six, converting. So, converting radians. And degrees. I kind of talked to you about drawing an angle, and we did it in a hundred degrees. Now we started talking about some number up there with radians. Let's talk about the difference between the two. So I can measure my distance from me to that door over there, and I can say it is about 15 to 20 feet away, but I can also express the distance from here to there in inches. It'd be a way bigger number but it would still represent the same exact distance from me to the door, just in two different units. Does that make sense? Okay, radians and degrees do the same exact thing. If you look at the unit circle I gave you, or you can look at the one in the back of the room, I have the degrees in yellow, and then I have the radians in purple, okay? So 90 degrees all the way at the top, that location, that right angle can be expressed in degrees as 90, or in radians as pi over 2, okay? may not be familiar with working with the pies, the pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 4, but you will this chapter, okay? But just know that that right angle, that distance, can be expressed in two different notations, in degrees as 90 or in radians as pi over 2, okay? What we're going to see now is how to convert back and forth between the two. Um, if you'd like, have your calculator out so I can teach you, like, some nice fancy ways of how to, to use that. 
So go getting that out while I write your conversions here. So if I want to convert from radians to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. And if I'm going the other way around, from degrees to radians, then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, by pi over 180. So the tip that I give my free calc class, because they're memorizing all of this, is if I want a degree, I have the degree in the numerator. If I want a radian, then I have the radian, the pi, in the numerator. Okay? If any of you are considering going to calculus next year, I would suggest that from now to the end of the year, you strive to memorize um, instead of just writing on an index card. Here is your second big formula for today, okay? So, if you look at the next slide, we have a decent amount of examples for each, okay? I'm going to do one of each of these examples with you. I'm going to show you the calculator, and then I'm going to give you a minute to do the rest on your own, all right? So, if we look at the next slide, you're going to go degrees to radians on the left side. The first example gives you 135 degrees. Looking at your formulas, if I want to go from degrees to radians, I'm going to multiply this by pi over 180. My suggestion to you um, it's going, to, it's going to be to ignore the pi for a moment and then put it back in at the end, okay? By the way, we are totally okay with fractions. Messy fractions are a-okay here, okay? So, if I have my calculator out, let's see this out. I'm going to write this as one fraction. I'm going to say 135 pi over 180. I'm going to ignore the pi for the sake of my calculator, and I'm going to let my calculator do the reducing for me. So I'm going to press alpha y equals so we can get our fraction button. And I'm just going to put everything except for the pi, the 135 over 180. Oops, sorry. Press enter. If it gives you a decimal, you have math, and then number one is frac. It'll convert it to a fraction for you, and it's 3 over 4. Okay? So now, we're going to rewrite that fraction as 3 over 4, and now go ahead and put the pi back in. And that is your answer. Um, take a look at what happens if I accidentally put the pi in. If I put 130... 135, the pi button is right above the little um, exponent button. If I put 135 pi over 180, what does pi represent? 3.14 and so on, right? It takes that into consideration and it changes the whole thing into this nasty decimal. And then you can't even math bracket. Okay? See how much messier that is? Are we good with degrees to radians? Let's see it the other way around. So on the right side of that slide, we have converting radians to degrees. And they give us pi over 2. Now I know I showed you visually on the unit circle how pi over 2 has 90 degrees. So we should already know what our answer is going to be. Uh, but let's take a look at why that happens. So when I go from radians to degrees, 
I'm multiplying by 180 over pi. What's going to happen with those two pi's? They're going to cancel out. And I'm left with 180 over 2. Now, this is an easy one to do mentally. Half of 180 is 90. And that's your answer. If this was a little more complicated, you can go to your calculator again. How are we doing, guys? Feeling confident to try the other ones on your own? Okay. All right, so let's check out the rest. The next one, um, from degrees to radians, was negative 120. Going to multiply it by pi over 180. We have negative 120 pi over 180. Remember, you can ignore that pi and reduce. And what did you guys get for this one? Negative 2 pi over 3. All right. From radians to degrees, they gave us pi. We multiply them by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel, and I'm just left with 1. 80. Good? All right. I'm not going to look at that bottom sentence for now. All right, I'm going to keep on with the left side. Degrees to radians, multiplying by pi over 180 for all of these. We have negative 150 pi over 180. And what did that reduce to for you guys? And the next one, 90 pi over 180. What did that reduce to for you? And again, we saw how pi over 2 gave us 90 on the other question. So hopefully that one starts to stick for you. And then here, I have 180 pi over 180. What are you left with? Just pi. Okay. And now radians to degrees. I want the degree on top. For all of these, the pi's should cancel. Here I'm left with negative 180 over 3. What did that clean up to? Good, negative 60. You're just converting. So again, if your question is negative, your answer should stay negative. The next one I have 180 over 6. What does that give me? Whoa, give me a mistake. Hold on. What did I do? Thank you. Yell at me, guys. That is the point. So, yes, I forgot about that 5. That 5 needs to get multiplied by the 180. There we go. So, guys, in your calculator, you can do that all at once under ma um, alpha y equals. When you're in the fraction, you can put literally in the numerator 5 times 180. So again, that 5 times that 180, and the denominator, you only have the 6 left over. So on E, you have 2 times the 180, and in the denominator, I only have 3 left. What did that give me? This one is 120. Yeah, the last one was 150. All right. All right, any questions on these? All right, so I'm going to move on to a word that you're going to hear me say a lot for the rest of the year, and that word is coterminal. Let me give you a parallel to what coterminal means. You guys started to get trained at a certain point in a math class to write 4 over 8 as what? 1 over 2. It's the reduced, it's cleaner, it's the more like standard way of seeing half being expressed. We don't always see it as 4 over 8, right? So 
Code terminal does the same thing with angles and degrees. A standard, clean, reduced form of an angle in degrees or radians is to be within one circle. So, for example, if I said, okay, I'll give you a good one. 720. 720 degrees. Right, it'd be 0 or 360 because that just meant that I went around the circle twice. Okay? Say it again. So what would be the max degree I can use? 360. What would be the minimum degree I can use? Zero. Does that make sense? Beautiful. So you're already starting to come up with, I'm going to say the formula loosely, but it's not even a formula. So if a coterminal angle is an angle within one circle, then I want to make sure that my theta is always between 360 and zero. Okay? That's for degrees. Looking at that unit circle, what is 360 degrees called as a radian? 2 pi. Okay? So, how would I express this exact same statement, but in radians? Theta has to be in between what? How did you tell me to call 360? Right, so 0 to 2 pi. Does that make sense? So if I told you something like 400 degrees, right? Drawing wise, let me give you an example here. Remember I told you you always start here on the initial side, on the right side. If I wanted to draw 400 degrees, watch me do this here. I'm going to go up to 90, over to 180, down to 270, over to 360. I have to go 400 degrees. How do I find out how much more to draw? Subtract what? 400. Minus 360, and what does that give me? 40 degrees. So I know that I need to go 40 degrees more, and that's how I know to draw 400 degrees. So you just, believe it or not, just came up with the first rule for coterminal. If my angle is past 360, if my angle is too big, what is the rule to get back down to coterminal? Subtract 360. So we'll say rule number one is if theta is too big, you're going to subtract 360. Can anybody think of what the rule would be if my angle is too small? What if I gave you negative 90 degrees? Add 360, you're brilliant. So if theta is too small, meaning it's a negative value, it's less than zero, then you're going to add 360. Those are your rules. That's your formula for finding coterminal. Okay? So let me give you a quick visual as if it's too small. Let's say I said negative 210 degrees. I obviously know that when I'm going to draw it, I need to go backwards because it's negative. I need to go backwards in that direction, but how much is the question? So, we said if it's too small, we're going to add 360. Negative 210 plus 360. What does that give me? So, where would 150 degrees lie on this? 
Exactly. Beautiful question. You said, the question was, what if we have negative 500? I add 360 and I still end up with a negative. What do you guys think we would do next? Add another 360. You're going to, same thing like if you reduce um, 4 over 8 and you got 2 over 4, you reduce again. So same thing with coterminal. If you still end up with a negative, a number that's too small, or still end up with a number too big, you just keep adding or subtracting 360 until you land within 0 and 360. Fantastic question. So back to this question, we get 150 degrees. If I know that this one is 180 and this one's 90, I know that 150 is somewhere around here. So that will be my terminal side. But because negative 210 was expressed, again, as negative, we're just going to go backwards to it. Okay? Yes, so 150, the coterminal value, tells me where to draw my terminal side. Okay, if you're looking at your unit circle, that formula sheet that I handed out, you can see that 150 is somewhere around here. Now, 150 tells me where to draw that line, but what I'm really trying to draw is negative 210. So since it's negative, I'm just going to go to that line going downward instead of going over. Like if I was drawing 150 degrees, I would just go over to that exact same line. The coterminal part or the drawing part? Okay, so remember what we're trying to draw is negative 210. The coterminal value tells me where to draw the 6. Okay? So I know that 150 on a normal circle is right here in this second little box. But because I'm drawing negative 210, negative 210 is the distance to that line in the negative direction where 150 is the, the distance, the angle, in the positive direction. Doing good? Again, because 400 is positive and this one is negative. Cool, guys? All right, so I'm going to fast forward to slide 12, okay? We're going to take a pause on the drawing, and we're just going to practice finding co-terminal angles. So the first example, A, gives you 390. The second one gives you 405. And C gives you negative 135. And the instructions just say to find, they could either give you the instructions in one of two ways. They could say find the coterminal angle, or they could say find the angle that's within 0 and 360 degrees. They can use the terminology or they can use the definition, okay? So 360, you should be asking yourself this question. Too big, too small, or just right? Which one is this one? Too big. So if 390 is too big, what am I going to do? Subtract what? 360. And what is 390 minus 360? 30 degrees. Nice, that is your answer. Again, if you don't know if that's your answer, once you get 30 degrees, you should be asking yourself, too big, too small, or just right? Is it between 0 and 360? So you're good. Question B, too big, too small, or just right? Too big. So subtract that 360. Beautiful, 45. 45 is between 0 and 360, so it is just right. Letter C, negative 135. Too big, too small, or just right? Too small, so what am I going to do? Add 360. And what does that give me? What's it again? 
Okay, so let's think if I add 360 and then I subtract 360 again, I'll go back to the same number. So think if it's possible to ever have a negative number, add 360 and pass 360. You can't. So the moment I, if I go past zero and I add 360, I won't be able to pass 360, so I won't see the zero. Does that make sense? All right, so the next slide um, gets a little more complicated just because we're going to have to work with some fractions. I know you guys love your fractions. If these values, these degrees, were expressed as radians, right, like the purple ones in the unit circle, Instead of adding 360 or subtracting 360, what do you think I'm going to have to add or subtract? 2 pi. So let's add that to our notes over here. We'll say or 2 pi, depending on if it's in radians or degrees. So I am on the next slide on the PowerPoint. I'm on slide 13. And A says 5 pi over 2. Okay? Now the reason why this gets a little more difficult is because with the fractions, it's a little harder to analyze if you pass the 360, the circle, or the 2 pi. Okay, so I need you to bear with me really quick for a second with my drawing here but to see if you can capture this. It's going to make your life a lot easier to analyze this. On my unit circle, I have 0, pi over 2, or half of a pi, 1 whole pi, 3 pi over 2, which we could say is a pi and a half, and then we have two whole pies, okay? So the question that you're trying to ask yourself, again, we're going to ignore the pies, is look at this fraction, 5 over 2. Does 5 over 2 surpass 2? Yes or no? Yes. What kind of a decimal does 5 over 2 give you? 2 point something. The moment it's past 2, if you're in your head you can think 2 point something, then you know it's past 2 pi, and now you have to do the subtraction. Okay? Another quick way, and I need you to listen to this carefully. If my numerator is double the denominator, do you agree that that equals 2? So, for example, what's a fraction that equals 2? 6 over 3, 6 is double 3, right? Give me another one. 4 over 2, because 4 is double 2. Give me one more. I heard 10 over 5. 10 is double what 5 is. Does that make sense? So if you can look at the fraction and ask yourself, is the numerator more than double the denominator, then that's your quick check to analyze. If you surpass 2 pi, you're going to have to subtract. So I'll say that one more time. If the numerator is more than double the denominator, you know that you pass. 2 pi, and you're going to have to subtract. So I look at my denominator and I see 2. I know double that is 4. 5 is obviously more than 4, so I'm going to have to subtract the 2 pi. Did I lose anybody with that explanation? All right. So subtract 2 pi. Here's everyone's favorite part. I am working with fractions. So what am I going to have to get? A common denominator. What's my denominator here? 2. So I'm going to have to multiply the 2 pi by 2 over 2. Okay? So now I have 5 pi over 2 minus 4 pi over 2. What does that give me? A single pi, right, over 2. Okay? Now you have to ask yourself, because like the question that was asked earlier, if it was like a massive negative that I, when I add or subtract, it's still negative, then I could do it again. Or if it's too big, 
I have, might have to subtract the group 50 if you find more than one. So you need to check that here. So pi over 2 is an easy one to memorize. We know it's a 90 degrees, so we know it's good. But you could always check. My denominator is 2. Double 2 is 4. Is that numerator more than 4? No. So this is my answer. I'm good. Okay. This is option 1. This is solving this by hand. Okay. Option number two, I'm going to show you with a calculator, okay? Once I know that I have to subtract the two pi, just like we did earlier that we put the fractions in our calculator and we ignored the pi, we can do that here. So if I ignore the pi, I have alpha y equals, I'm just going to put 5 over 2, okay? And then I'm going to scoot to the right, ignore the pi, and say minus 2. Press enter, we have a decimal, we can math bracket, and it gives me one half, and I just put the pi back in, I have pi over 2. That is solving this using your calculator. Okay, option 1 by hand, option 2 by calculator. Option 3, I'm not the biggest fan of because I want you to learn to do it both ways, but I'm going to show it to you as an option. When push comes to shove and you're on a quiz or test, I want you to get it right. Option three is if question A asks me for 5 pi over 2, you do have the freedom of converting it over to a degree, solving it easy with the 360 as a degree, but then you do have to convert it back because if the question is asked in radians, you have to be able to give me the answer in radians. If it lands on the unit circle, you could absolutely look on the unit circle, but not all of them will land on the unit circle. Okay? So, 5 pi over 3, if I want to convert this to degrees, I would say times 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. I have 5 times 180 over 2. Okay. That gives me, oops, that gives me 450, right? So now I can find coterminal as 450, which is a lot easier, because I'm just subtracting 360, and that gives me 90. The only bad part about this is that now, again, because the question was asked in radians, you have to convert it back. So the last step would be to do 90 times pi over 180. And when you put that in your calculator, that gives you pi over 2. So you still get the same exact answer. I feel like personally this one's lengthier because you have three steps. But if you have a severe fear of fractions, you have a little PTSD, then this one uh, lets you avoid adding and subtracting fractions. I prefer you get used to this one. Um, but again, when push comes to shove, I want you to be able to get this right. You do it with fractions, staying in radians. You can do it on the calculator. Or you can convert, find it, and then convert back. All right, so I'm going to start the work for you on the board uh, for B and C. If you're still working on it, just don't look up. Um, we said that B was 11 pi over 4. Double 4 is 8, and 11 is obviously bigger than 8. So I subtract 2 pi and get a common denominator of 4. We have 11 pi over 4. Minus 8 pi over 4. And 11 minus 8. 3 pi over 4. Double 4 is 8. 3 did not surpass 8, so this is good. On C, I had a negative pi over 6. So I obviously can see based off the negative that this is too small. So here I'm adding 2 pi. I got the common denominator. Negative pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. Be very careful here. A lot of people um, get a little confused with the negatives, positives, and the pi's. So negative 1 pi, pi plus 12 pi gives me what? 11 pi. So 11 pi over 6. So I needed a common denominator 6. So I multiplied 6 over 6, right, and 6 times 2 is 12. Um, so double 6 is 12. Did 11 surpass 12? 
nope, so I am A-OK -okay here. If I would have gone still a negative, I would have added the 2 pi again. If it would have been something too big, I would have subtracted again, OK? Any questions on this slide? All right, so on the next slide, we're going to do the same thing, but we're just going to see the examples where you're going to have to either add or subtract the 2 pi's or the 360's more than one, OK? So I am on slide 14. A says 765 degrees. Too big, too small, or just right? Too big. So subtract 360. What do I get there? You get 405. 405, too big, too small, or just right? Still too big, so what do I do now? Subtract 360 again. You do it until you get a value between 0 and 360. And I get 45 degrees, too big, too small, or just right? So now I can stop. B says 22 pi over 6. What's double 6? 12. Is 22 bigger than 12? Oh, yeah. So what am I going to do? Beautiful. Subtract 2 pi. I need my common denominator. So 22 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6. What's 22 minus 12? 10 pi over 6. Too big, too small, or just right? Just right. Okay. So I know it's big numbers. Double 6 is 12. 10 did not pass 12, so I am A-OK -okay here. Again, I don't want it to pass 2 pi. So, right, 2 pi. So if you ignore the pi's, that means I don't want this fraction to pass 2. Okay? Remember when we gave the example of 10 over 5, 8 over 4? Something that equals 2 means that the numerator is double the denominator. So double the denominator would have been 12. Did 10 pass 12? No, so we're good. That means I'm less than 2. For this one, right, exactly. 12 and lower. Okay? All right. C says negative 19 pi over 6. Too big, too small, or just right? Too small. It's a negative. So I'm going to add 2 pi. Get a common denominator. I have negative 19 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. Negative 19 plus 12. I heard it. Negative 7. What's wrong with that answer? It's still a negative. It's still too small. So now I need to, so even though this was the answer there, it was still too small. So I'm just going to do the process again. Negative 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Get that common denominator. And what is negative 7 plus 12? 5 pi over 6. Double the denominator would be 12. 5 is obviously not bigger than 12. And it's a positive answer now, so I am good. All right, so we're going to continue on to slide 15. Remember how I told you when we saw that formula for theta earlier on? We said that theta, which is always in radians, is equal to S, which is arc length, over radius, right? That was the formula for radians. 
Now, if I want a formula for arc length, What do I get to get S, arc length by itself? You multiply that R over with theta. So S is equal to R times theta. Okay? This is your next formula. Please make yourself a side note that theta in these formulas is always in radians. I'm telling you this because they're going to try and trick you. Instead of giving you the value as a radian, they're going to try and mess with you and give it to you as a degree. And if you put the degree in there, it's going to mess up your answer. What do you think you have to do to that degree first? Convert it over to radians? Exactly. And then you can plug it in the formula. Okay? So go ahead to the next slide. I'm going to do the first one with you, and then you're going to do the second one on your own. The first question says, a circle has a radius of 7 inches. Find the length of the arc, a.k.a. the arc length. intercepted by a central angle of 120 degrees. See that? So automatically I know that I'm going to use this formula because they want me to find arc length. But they gave me theta in degrees when I need it in radius. So step one is going to be to take that 120 degrees and convert it over to radians by multiplying it by pi over 180. And what does that give me? Beautiful, 2 pi over 3. So this is the theta that I'm going to use, okay? So now I can grab my formula and say arc length is equal to radius times theta. So I can say 7, which was my radius that they gave me, times 2 pi over 3. Now, inward problems. We're talking about real life scenarios. Okay, so if you go to Home Depot, think of something you could build in the shape of a circle. Like I remember once my brother built a fire pit with these cement bricks and it was in the shape of a circle. So when he goes to Home Depot, he wants to know what distance around an arc, what arc length he needs to know what quantity of bricks he needs, right? But when I go to Home Depot, I don't tell the guy, hey, uh, 7 times 2, there would be 14. So I need uh, 14 pi over 3 feet of bricks. He's going to laugh. He has no idea what you're talking about. So in word problems, is the one time I want you to take the opportunity to actually put the pi in your calculator and get the actual decimal. Does that make sense? Here it's okay to round, because now we're actually going to Home Depot. I need to kind of estimate how many bricks I need. So go ahead and put 7 times 2 times pi divided by 3. And I changed my equal sign to an approximation symbol because the decimal is going to be pretty big and I'm going to have to round. So in your calculator, you should get 14.66 inches. All right, so for the second one, radius was 5. They're asking for the arc length. And then the angle that they give you is 150 degrees. So if they want to know the arc length, I need to make sure that that angle is in radians. So we converted 150 by multiplying by pi over 180. And we got that theta was 5 pi over 6. Now I can plug it into the formula with the radius, which is 5 times that theta, which is 5 pi over 6. And in your calculator, you approximately get 13.09 inches. Okay? All right, so the next slide um, gives you two more formulas. 
one for linear speed and one for angular speed. You guys might be used to hearing linear speed as the word velocity, especially if you guys are taking physics, okay? Which is why it should make sense that the formula for linear speed says V equals S divided by T, okay? So V stands for velocity, S, remember, stands for arc length, and T stands for time. Um, so I put a second formula here. Remember that if they don't give you arc length, arc length can be found with radius times radians, the theta, okay? And then angular speed is represented with a W, and it equals theta over time. Again, remembering that theta is always in these word problems radians. So again, if they give you an angle in degrees, you are going to have to convert that first. All right, so I'm going to our last question for today. It is on slide 18. It says, a windmill in Holland is used to generate electricity. Its blades are 12 feet in length. So think about if you have a windmill. Pardon my drawing. What do you think the blade being 12 feet in length represents? If this is going to start going in circles, right, the direction, it is the radian. The, excuse me, the radius. So if the blade is 12 feet in length, then the radius is 12 feet. Okay, here's our example. Uh, next it says that these rotate at 8 revolutions per minute. 8 revolutions and then it says per minute. Okay? What is one revolution on a circle equal? 360. If I need to be in radians, how do I say 360 in radians? How do I say 360 in radians? 2 pi. So it says it does a revolution eight times. So you just told me the word revolutions meant 360 or 2 pi. So I'm saying 8 times the 2 pi. Does that make sense? Anytime you see the word revolution, you can always directly understand that as 2 pi or 360, depending on which format you want to use. So 8 times 2 is 16 pi, and that gives me my theta. And if it says per minute, we're talking about time, how much time is passing? 60 seconds, one minute. So if I want to be in terms of minute, I could say one minute. Okay? So I have my radius is 12 feet, I have my theta is 16 pi, and I have my time is one minute. Okay? And then it continues to ask, find the linear speed specifically in feet per minute. So it's a good thing we call this one minute. Okay? So linear speed, the formula is velocity equals arc length over time. Do we already have arc length in this question? It wasn't given to us. They gave us radius and theta, which is a good thing because I can find arc length by saying radius times theta over time. So all I have to do is the radius, which is 12, times the theta, which is 16 pi, divided by time, which is 1. Again, we're in a word problem, so feel free to put it all in your calculator and get your decimal. You should approximate to 603.185, and then it says we are in feet per minute. And that completes this first lesson.